What is sleep and why should you even care? When people think about being healthy, they think about eating right and exercise, but most people don't think about how important sleep is for their health. This includes both how much they sleep and the quality of sleep. So let me ask you this. When you wake up in the morning, how do you feel? Do you feel refreshed and ready to go? Or do you feel sluggish and groggy and maybe even grumpy? And this stat right here is crazy. According to the CDC, only one third of adults actually get the recommended minimum seven or more hours of sleep every night. The most common reason for this is trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, AKA insomnia. This could be related to stress. It could also be related to too much caffeine or alcohol or side effects of medications. It could also be related to other habits that you don't even realize. But there are other medical conditions that could be the root cause of the problem, like sleep apnea, like depression. Whatever the reason, not getting good sleep takes its toll on your overall well being and hugely impacts your productivity. And not getting good sleep impacts your life in so many ways. What happens is we're too tired to work efficiently too tired to exercise, and our cravings for junk food go sky high. Not to mention, we're more likely to be in a bad mood. It also impacts our ability to drive a car. In fact, drowsy driving is responsible for a good portion of fatal motor vehicle accidents. Over time, sleep deprivation increases the risk of developing chronic medical conditions like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. The good news is that there are ways to improve the quality and quantity of sleep that you get. A lot of people are quick to reach for sleep medication, but usually that's not the solution. So in this video, I'm gonna help you understand what sleep is and the other videos in the sleep series that I'm doing, we'll talk about different sleep issues that exist and ways that you can improve upon your sleep. So let's get started with talking about what sleep is. When you sleep, you go through different stages of sleep. There are two main types of sleep. There's REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement, and we'll get into that in a minute. The other main part of sleep is non-REM sleep, during which thinking and most bodily functions slow down, but movement can still occur. Every time you fall asleep, you enter non-REM sleep. To be more exact, in making the transition from wakefulness into light sleep, you spend about five minutes drifting off in stage N1 sleep. Here, your body temperature slightly drops, your muscles relax, and your eyes often move slowly from side to side. You lose awareness of your surroundings, but you're easily awoken. Then there's stage N2, which is considered light sleep, and it lasts about 10 to 25 minutes. Here, your eyes are still, and your heart rate and breathing are slower compared to when you're awake. Here, your brain intermittently disconnects from outside sensory input and begins the process of consolidating memories. Stage N3 is considered deep sleep. Here, your brain is less responsive to external stimuli, making it harder to wake up. Also, breathing becomes more regular and heart rate and blood pressure comes down a little bit. There's less blood flow to your brain. And during this deep sleep, your body renews and repairs itself. The pituitary gland releases a pulse of growth hormone that stimulates tissue growth and muscle repair. The body releases more substances that activate your immune system, helping your body defend itself against infection. Deep sleep plays a large part in restoring alertness and is responsible for allowing you to function at peak performance, both mentally and physically. So that wraps up the stages of non-REM sleep, but what about REM sleep? After non-REM sleep, you shift to REM sleep, which means rapid eye movement. And that's exactly what happens. Your eyes are moving rapidly underneath your eyelids. And the crazy thing is, that's really the only part of your body that moves during this time, except for your breathing, which is controlled by your diaphragm. But other than that, the muscles in your arms and legs, your core muscles are essentially paralyzed, except for some minor twitches here and there. Meanwhile, the brain is super active as it races with thoughts because it's dreaming. Your breathing, body temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate go slightly higher. REM sleep is believed to restore your mind even more so than the deep sleep that we just mentioned. Studies have shown that REM sleep facilitates learning, 
memory, and problem-solving ability. About three to five times a night, or about every 90 minutes, you enter REM sleep. The first time you hit REM sleep, it only lasts a few minutes. But then the next time you hit it, it's a little longer, and then the next time, even a little bit longer, and so on. It increases progressively over the course of the night, and the final time you hit it, it could be about a half hour or so. This is why it's important to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep per night, because you want to make sure that you're hitting that REM sleep as many times as you can, ideally around five or so. If you only hit REM sleep three times, you're not going to be optimizing your brain power compared to if you hit that four or five times. And if you want to learn more ways that you can optimize your brain power and overall health, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to get notified of when I post new videos. And if you're liking this video, hit that like button, which lets me know that you like it. And now back to sleep or sleep architecture that is. When you sleep, you go through different stages that we just talked about. It always starts with drifting off into that stage N1 sleep, which is part of non-REM sleep. Then there's N2, then there's N3, which is considered deep sleep. And finally, there's REM sleep where you're dreaming. After REM sleep, you repeat the cycle throughout the night. Let's talk about your internal clock. Certain structures within your brain, like the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the pineal gland, produce chemicals responsible for sleeping and waking. The control of sleeping and waking, or this internal clock, is known as your circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms make people's desire for sleep strongest between midnight and 6 a.m., especially between 2 and 4 a.m. It also occurs to a lesser extent in the mid-afternoon. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is where your internal clock is located, which is in your hypothalamus. Although the clock is mostly self-regulating, it does take the brain's external sensory cues. For example, the biggest external cue is light. Exposure to light during the day helps keep the circadian clock on the correct time schedule. Exposure to light at night can shift sleep and wakefulness to undesirable times. And what about melatonin? Neurons in the suprachiasmatic nucleus contain receptors for melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone made in the brain, specifically in the pineal gland. It's made in a predictable daily rhythm. Melatonin levels start to rise once the sun sets and decreases after sunrise. Melatonin makes you sleepy, helping your internal clock stay on track. You probably know about how long you need to sleep to feel fully rested. Some people feel great after getting only six hours of sleep, while others are groggy if they only get nine hours. So how can this be explained? Well, it looks like the people who feel great with less sleep have a genetic mutation that at least partially explains this. That's because scientists found two mutations in a gene that affects circadian rhythms called DEC2. DAC. So if you naturally awake after six hours and feel great when you wake up without having to drink lots of coffee or take naps, maybe you have this genetic mutation. And quite frankly, I'm a little jealous. So this video covered the basics of what sleep is. The main learning points for you to take away are these. Number one, deep sleep, which occurs in non-REM sleep, is especially important for body repair. Number two, REM sleep is especially important for learning, memory formation, and optimal brain power. Number three, in order to maximize deep sleep and REM sleep, you need at least seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Number four, your internal clock is regulated by itself, but also by external factors like light. If you can, follow your internal clock, which means go to bed when it's dark and wake up when it's daylight. Now, there's way more to sleep than I covered in this video. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my video, The Six Keys to a Great Night's Sleep. This way, you can maximize your chances of getting enough REM and non-REM deep sleep every night. And if you do this, you'll be able to function at your peak performance. See you in the next one.